Hey, what's up everyone? Shamrock here with an exciting new video for you. Uh, today was the launch of the newest patch, which is 10.0.7. Um, and it comes with like a semi overhaul of the talent trees we've been working with for the past few months, um, as well as some new abilities to play with, which is really cool. Uh, since it is day one, there is still some testing and like some theory crafting to be done um, that we'll probably see play out like over the next few weeks. But I feel like I currently have a pretty good grasp on how things are working um, and how they are going to continue to work um, and what I think are going to be like the most used talents for higher Mythic Plus content. On that note, um, I would like to mention that this guide is purely for pushing higher Mythic Plus keys. So if you're looking for builds and tips for like a raid, um, I encourage you to head on over to the Resto Shaman Discord and pick some brains there as this video probably won't have the information that you're looking for. Uh, so at a first glance, these new talents change our playstyle slightly uh, and in my opinion give us a little bit more variety for different builds that we can play depending on what the affixes are um, as well as like what dungeon you are in which is cool because i feel like before it was you know barely changing any talents between anything um, so just like the previous talent guide that i made for uh, 10.0.5 um, i'm going to go through both trees starting with the left one and I'll go a little bit more in depth with this one to discuss like the must have talents versus the talents that you can play around with week to week. Um, and I will go through each row and kind of point out what I feel is worth discussing. Um, but if I miss anything or skip something over that you're like curious about, feel free to comment below um, and I'll do my best to help you out. Or, you know, you can always bring your question to the uh, Shaman Discord and uh, there's lots of people there who can help. So before I get started, I would just like to say uh, a big thank you for the support I've gotten over the last patch. Um, a lot of people have been reaching out to say that some of my guides have helped them. Uh, and for me, that's really awesome to hear, like like the most awesome thing to hear. Because um, the reason I started making these videos was to try and like stamp out some of the uh, sort of like doom and gloom mentality that was around the shaman community for the last patch. Um, and I think a lot of people were considering the spec to be dead and sort of pointless for the current content. So I wanted to help show that, uh, you know, to both new and older shamans that we are definitely capable of pushing higher content with the right attitude um you know with some practice and a little bit of guidance um you know sure maybe we aren't meta but there's there's so much that we can do um, and it's no reason to not play the class unless you're like pushing that top you know 0.1 percent of content um so anyways thank you very much and i hope my videos continue to be helpful for you know everyone who watches before diving into it, I'll just mention that the first half of this video, I'm going to go through each row and talk a little bit about some of the uh, talents that you may be on the fence about, as well as any talents that have changed with this patch. Um, the second half of the video, I will run through some of the standard builds that I would use uh, in different situations. So you can check out the bookmarks in the description for this video if you want to just like skip to that section. Um, I promise I won't be offended if you do. So just like in the last talent video I made, I will not be discussing the obvious talents like Astral Shift or Chain Lightning, um, so just keep that in mind. And with all of that being said, let's get started. So the first talent I want to take a look at is the Choice Astral Shift talent between Astral Bulwark and Planes Traveler. I would still take Planes Traveler, just like last time, as 40% DR, um, and by damage, or sorry, by DR I mean damage reduction. Um, the 40% DR that is that comes with the standard Astral Shift is more than enough to survive pretty much all mechanics, even on really high tyrannical keys. So the extra 20% DR from the Astral Bulwark talent is not really ever needed in my experience. Uh, it's kind of like overkill. So having Af Astral Shift come up quicker is a much better enhancement and allows for multiple Astral Shift uses on some harder tyrannical bosses. Um, so a great example would be... Um, being able to use it on both the 4th and 8th Screech on the Croth fight in Algothar Academy. Um, you know, so having that talent allows you to use it twice in, in fights like that, which is really great for higher tyrannical fights. Um, additionally, now that Earth Shield provides 6% damage reduction on us at all times if you're using the Elemental Orbit talent, uh, there's even less of a reason to go for that extra 20% from Astral Bulwark as it would be, like I said, it's already overkill, so it would just be even more overkill. Um, so moving right next to this, we have the Spirit Wolf talent, which is a personal favorite of mine. Um, this will increase your movement speed while in Ghost Wolf, as well as give you a stacking damage reduction buff that goes up to 20% when in Ghost Wolf for 5 seconds or longer um, which is amazing on its own when you are preemptive and using it for certain boss or trash mechanics um, but now paired with the six percent earth shield dr as well as astral shift when you need it um, we are pretty much unkillable at times now which is pretty cool um, so from that talent i will go right over to earth elemental which provides another defensive for us with its 15 percent health increase while it's active 
Um, so I actually didn't mention Earth Elemental in my um, my last talent ability. Um, as I or sorry, my last talent video, as I wasn't really pushing keys that were high enough to warrant the extra defensive at that time. So since then, I have really gotten value out of this ability in higher keys, and I would say you know maybe like. 23s even 22s and higher especially on tyrannical weeks um, it can be an integral part of surviving abilities uh, that the really hard bosses do so like odin's uh, spears and the rune phase um, or like balakar khan's phase 2 lightning spear ability um, earth elemental just kind of gives you another defensive to use um, and for those fights that last a really long time you will need all of the defensives you can get um, the fact that it also lasts a minute is great because you can use it for multiple abilities in one fight, um, assuming it doesn't die first. And it also provides a quick distraction during trash pulls if like the tank dies. So um, that's the other use for it because it gives the group you know time to be res the tank before anyone else dies. Or if it's like towards the end of a pull, it may give you enough time to actually finish off the mobs and then res the tank yourself. So so yeah, definitely go into Earth Elemental if you if you can. Um, Okay, moving on to the next row, we have Elemental Orbit. So in my last video, I discussed how valuable I find this talent, um, and that value has only increased with the changes to Earth Shield via Earthen Harmony. Um, not only is this second Earth Shield giving you 20% healing on yourself for the entire dungeon, it is now also giving you a 6% decrease in damage taken at all times at just the cost of a global cooldown every so often. Um, I honestly can't even put into words how valuable this is for higher keys, especially with the tyrannical effects. Um, so make sure you are running this talent and make sure you get into the habit of always ensuring Earth Shield is on you. Um, there are some handy weak auras that can help remind you if needed, but try to make it like a force of habit. Because um, yeah, you just basically you just want it to be second nature. You're always clicking Earth Shield on yourself whenever you get the chance, like in between pulls or when you have the uh, free global available. Um, okay, so moving on to the next row, we have Swirling Currents, which has seen a bit of a rework since the last patch. Um, instead of buffing a few individual heals after putting Cloudburst Totem down, this talent now just adds a flat 20% increase to the amount of healing done by Cloudburst. Um, which AK is like the final burst of healing that happens when it either expires or when you recall it. Um, unfortunately, this is a bit of a loss for Mythic Plus content as the 20% increased healing won't be super noticeable in most situations and provides less control and flexibility um, than what it used to be. But it is a great buff for raid environments where your Cloudburst is hitting like 20 or more people. Um, that being said, it is still a talent that you will want to take. Um, so you'll definitely want to put both of your points in here. Okay, uh, moving over to Windrush, they have actually made this an easier talent to get, so I would say you should pretty much always have this now, um, especially because it is the best pathway to get to Nature's Guardian, uh, which I'll discuss in a minute. Okay, moving down to the next row, uh, we're going to start with Surging Shields. So this talent has actually proved to be pretty powerful um, since, the, since the latest patch. Uh, it's doing a ton of healing in dungeons. Um, originally, I was going to say this is probably one of the talents I would take away from to talent into things like Curse to Spell or Purge, um, but given how powerful it's proven to be, um, I think you're actually maybe going to want to keep this. Um, it's still like a, in the grand priority of things, it's still something that you can get rid of um, because the healing it does do is healing that normally, if like if you have self-sustainable tanks, like they don't need it, they can just do it themselves. But um, you'll see on the screen, I put a few pictures of some breakdown and for some dungeons, these are all 24s that were completely successfully um, and earth shield does a ton of healing with this talent so um, so i would say talent into this but if you are looking for points this might be one that you want to look at uh, taking points away from um, moving two spaces over, Nature's Guardian is a talent that has honestly really grown on me, especially over the last couple of weeks as I'm like pushing higher and higher. Um, it is fantastic for pushing really high tyrannical bosses that have quick burst damage, um, such as Veximus, Mana Bombs, uh, Odin, Runes and Spears, Caracas, Flame Spits, um, and honestly a lot more. Think of this talent as like a boot-like version, that's like our version of Achieve Death. Um, Made even better by the fact that it can occur every 45 seconds, meaning that like you'll get several uses with it throughout a lengthy and stressful boss fight. Um, coupled with the 6% damage reduction from Earth Shield, all of these defensive abilities we've been discussing will make you very hard to kill, um, which allows you to focus on other squishier players during big damage mechanics. Um, so if you don't have to worry about yourself because you have Nature's Guardian, you know, cheat death healing you as well as DR from Earth Shield um, and you know some of the other things I've discussed. 
for abilities like Karaka's Flame Spit, where she targets three people with like insane damage, you basically don't have to worry about yourself now. You can focus on the other people who are taking damage, which is uh, very important. Okay, uh, quickly going to discuss the right side of the tree here, um, as they made Gust of Wind slightly easier to get now. I personally would still not spec into it, as I find more value in the remaining talents on the left side of the tree. Um, but I know, trust me, I know that this is one of the most fun abilities in the game. So if you feel that you want to take it, please don't let me stop you from doing that. Um, my line of thinking is that it does not make or break you. Um, you are already fast enough with Spirit Wolf and you can survive long falls with things like a slow fall potion or the parasol toy. Um, so it's not like necessary, but if it brings you joy, you can take talents from Surging Shields, Mana Spring, Thundershock, um, graceful spirit like whatever you want in order to get this talent so please once again if, if you want to take it go for it um, next spirit walker's grace is still just as valuable as it's always been allowing you to move while you cast your spells so this ability synergizes great with other cooldowns like ascendance and ancestral guidance um, and it's perfect for high damage windows on bosses where movement is required like azure blade's overwhelming power ability um, i strongly suggest you take this talent Put it on your bars so you do not forget about it. Um, it can make your life a lot easier in many situations in the current season and will continue to do so in the next season as well. Um, it's always been a great utility for us to have. I would also advise taking the next talent, which is Graceful Spirit, um, that buffs Spirit Walker's Grace as it reduces the cooldown and increases movement speed while it's active. Um, however, this is definitely a point that you can use somewhere else if you find yourself starved for points that you would rather use uh, to get into, like uh, for instance, Gust of Wind. Um, so once again, this is another talent where you can think of it's, it's a nice to have. So I usually have it, but um, feel free if you're like starved for talents and you're looking for somewhere to take talents from, um, this, is, this is a good one to look at. Okay, next we have Thunderstorm, um, which can be a little difficult to use on its own due to how severe the knockback is. It's like crazy. Um, but this can be a useful talent on its own during Sanguine Weeks, uh, so with the Sanguine Affix, as it gives you a tool to get mobs out of the Sanguine Pools. Um, or it gives you a tool to push mobs away before they die so that they do not drop their Sanguine Pools on other uh, mobs that can't move, uh, such as the, like the Big Worms in Algathar Academy. Those are a huge culprit for uh, Sanguine, and they take forever to kill even without Sanguine. So uh, it's, a, it's a good utility for Sanguine Weeks, but um, on non-Sanguine Weeks, I strongly encourage you to take um, Thunderstorm anyways so that you can take the uh, Thundershock talent, which is down here, um, as this turns Thunderstorm into an extremely useful knock-up ability with a short cooldown. Um, I still believe this is one of the best utility abilities they have given shamans in years, um, as it allows a huge degree of control in dungeons due to its ability to interrupt some abilities that cannot be interrupted using wind shear or other standard interrupts. Um, not only that, it is also an AoE ability, meaning that you can stop like a ton of casts happening at once with just one use if you if you play it right. Um, there's a use for this in every dungeon, especially on Fortified Weeks. Azure Vault is probably my best example of a dungeon where it really excels because you're able to interrupt uh, group wiping abilities like the Piercing Shards, um, the Waking Bane, or the uh, whatever that ability is that the little flowers at the beginning cast. Um, yeah, Thundershock is great for stopping all of that. In the past, uh, some shamans have told me that they do not like using this ability because it requires you to stand in the melee in order to use it effectively for the most part. Um, and to that, I would honestly say, I understand the hesitation, but to be a great player who helps their group push higher keys rather than hinders them, um, these are the types of things that you need to not only be comfortable doing, but also you need to like be an expert at it. Um, learning each pull in a dungeon inside and out will allow you to use abilities like Thundershock to their full potential um, and will really increase the value that you personally bring to higher Mythic Plus dungeons. Um, so just keep that in mind if, if that's something that you're hesitant about. Um, I get it, but really this is something you want to learn how to do. Uh, it's going to make you a better player. Uh, so, okay, so before going into the last row, I would just like to mention Poison Cleanse Totem as they have fixed the way it works. In the past, it used to only dispel one stack of poison at a time. Um, so on a fight like the Overgrown Ancient Boss in Algathar Academy, where the tank is getting like 20 plus stacks of poison, this totem was pretty much, uh, not pretty much, this totem was absolutely useless, it was garbage. Um, but as of this patch, Poison Dispel Totem, uh, or Poison Cleanse Totem, dispels all stacks of poison on the target, meaning that the utility on this has jumped uh, immensely for situations that warrant it. Um, currently, the only situation is the one 
that I just mentioned, the Overgrown Ancient. However, it is likely going to be a very useful ability in the Halls of Infusion dungeon next season as well. Um, so most situations you will not need to spec into this talent, but it is a great option to have for when the situation calls for it. Um, and it will likely get us invited into more groups now uh, for Algathar Academy this season, and definitely for Halls of Infusion next season as well. Okay, finally moving on to the last row, Nature Swiftness has been moved to this spot, um, and it's still as important as it as it ever was. Um, so make sure you take this talent and that you put it on your bars and get in the habit of using it. This talent works both with your healing and damage spells, um, and it synergizes nicely with the uh, Tidebringer buff that increases Chain Heal's range by 100% that we'll talk about later. Um, it's also very... Uh, it, also very importantly gives you a free heal by reducing the mana cost of whatever you use it with um, but actually it makes it free so the mana cost goes to zero and due to its low like one minute cooldown this can really add up in a mana taxing fight um, like the shaw of doubt and temple of the jade serpent so uh, really really amazing talent here you should definitely expect it to this uh, the only other talent I will mention on this last row is stone skin, or stone skin totem uh, so unfortunately in the current season of mythic plus dungeons uh, there are not really any scenarios I can think of where this talent really shines and is worth the point. So personally, I would not run it at this time. But there might be some situations next season uh, where it might be useful. So don't forget about it and just make sure you listen to like the buzz coming from the rest of the Shaman community um, so that you know when and if this, this talent becomes one that you want to take. Okay, now moving on to the really fun and exciting stuff, um, the rework of the restoration tree on the right. So they've baked in some of the abilities that were on here to prune the tree a bit and make it easier to reach some talents, um, as well as added some interesting new abilities that really change our playstyle. So first, before getting into the details, um, I just want to say I've actually made this video in parts. So the first part that I just went through, I made yesterday. Um, so since then, I've actually played a few higher keys, um, more than a few, and it's been super successful with these new abilities. Like extremely successful so i really want you to get excited about it too uh, because this update has really really increased our effectiveness in the mythic plus environment and has basically catapulted what we can do and not only that but like how quickly we can do it um, which is it's just so awesome um, i also really enjoy the idea so far from my experience um, that there's not just one build that you can use there's like definitely a play style that appears to be the most effective at this time um, which is using like a high tide tide bringer uh, chain heal focus build as well as like flow of the tides um, but there are several peripheral abilities that allow some like personal flexibility depending on who you are as a healer um, as well as depending on the active like weekly affixes and the specific dungeons you are running um, so far it looks at least like there's a lot more flexibility than what there was before this update um, and that's just really great news for for all of us okay uh, now getting into the actual tree i'm going to start on the third row but will mention the second row when I get into the different builds. Um, on this third row, you should always be taking Acid Rain, um, as always, as even though its damage was nerfed by 20% with this latest update, it is still one of the best healer damage abilities that are that is currently in the game, um, especially when buffed with Master of the Elements. Uh, okay, uh, Ancestral Vigor is still just as useful as it's always been, especially in higher Tyrannical Keys, so you will still be putting at least one point into this, um, likely two on Tyrannical Weeks. Okay, uh, looking at Flash Flood. Uh, so Flash Flood increases the cast speed for heals after spending Tidal Wave procs. Um, it's a lot of fun to use, but has three major downsides in my opinion that unfortunately mean your points are better spent somewhere else. Uh, so first, it is not a direct haste scale, meaning that it does not increase the rate and number of ticks on hots like Riptide or Healing Rain, um, or even the number of ticks that happen for Acid Rain as well, which is kind of sad. Um, second, it does not affect the speed of your global cooldown, meaning that sometimes you will be left with nothing to do while you kind of wait for your global cooldown to come back up. Um, and thirdly, and unfortunately, uh, the mana cost of spells do not scale with the speed at which you cast the spell, uh, meaning that casting quicker but weaker heals just means that you will need to cast more heals in order to get the same value as if you had spent these points in talents that actually strengthen your heals, um, ultimately meaning that you will be spending a lot more mana. Um, so the final verdict for this talent, as much as it saddens me because I do love it, is that you, sh I love the idea of it, um, is that you should not take it. The only exception I would have to this is that if you are like a newly uh, max level tune and you're gearing, um, you're gearing up your tune and you need something to supplement low haste values until you get haste from your gear, um, this is a talent that you can spec in until you're comfortable with, with, your, uh, with what you have on your gear. 
Okay, uh, moving on to the first really cool choice with the new tree, uh, which is Ancestral Reach versus Flow of the Tides. So Ancestral Reach, as always, uh, as it always has, gives a flat 8% heal increase to all chain heals and allows chain heal to bounce one extra time. Um, this means that chain heal will hit all five people in your group and each jump carries that 8% buff. Flow of the Tides, on the other hand, also allows Chain Heal to jump the extra time and hit all five people in the group, which is actually a big change because it used to not do that. Um, but the entire Chain Heal will also be buffed by 30% if you target someone who has the Riptide hot on them. Um, however, this Chain Heal will consume the remaining time on that Riptide. So if you cast this Chain Heal, Flow of the Tides buffed um, on a target with Riptide, it will essentially erase the Riptide, but it will buff the entire Chain Heal. Um, now, this is actually a really hot topic over the last couple of days, actually, honestly, over the last couple of months, um, because a lot of Resto Shaman play re revolves around how many Riptides you have out on the group, um, especially in a raid setting. I would say more in a raid setting than a Mythic Plus setting, but um, this is only going to be amplified by the next tier set bonus that we are receiving in 10.1, um, at least for now, as they may change it, since a lot of Shamans are unhappy with it. Um, but with our current tier set, however, this is a fun talent to use, as you can think of your Riptides as like ammunition for like big big saucy chain heals that can heal up the entire group. Uh, however, it is important to realize that Ancestral Reach uh, was not nerfed, meaning that it is just as viable as it has been this entire expansion so far, and I really stress that. Um, it's actually even more viable now with the Tidebringer buff that I will discuss shortly. So really, this choice node boils down to a couple of things that may vary from player to player. First, are you comfortable playing around the concept of consuming Riptides even though it may mess with the rest of your kit? And second, are you the type of player who is able to comfortably track your Riptide buffs, whether using a weak ore or not, at an effective enough level to make full use of this ability? And further to that, are you preemptive enough to place Riptides on targets before big damage windows happen in order to give yourself the ammunition that you need? If all of that sounds confusing or difficult to you, your playstyle may be more suited for Astral Reach. Um, personally, I think Flow of the Tides adds a layer of complexity and control, and I can comfortably say, with the practice that I've had so far, that I'm very happy with the way it's working, and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it may be awkward at first, but I encourage you to definitely try it out and give it a shot before you make your decision. Um, Flow of the Tides is what people will say is the best ability between the two, and it's true that it does equate to a lot more healing when used correctly directly, but if you are someone who likes passive buffs rather than ones that you have to put a lot of thought into, um, and if you're not pushing like top 1% content out there, Ancestral Reach is more than enough to get the job done. Um, honestly, the best way to think about it, I think, is there were shamans pushing 24s, 25s, 26s, and even 27s with Ancestral Reach before this patch, so that has not changed. You can absolutely do that as well. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, next would be a Master of the Elements. You definitely want to take this in Mythic Plus Dungeons for the main reason that it increases the damage that Acid Raid does. Um, also, while simultaneously buffing the healing that it does as well, which is pretty cool. So if you were curious how some Resto Shamans are pulling like 35 to 40k overall DPS, and even higher than that for like a whole dungeon, um, this is one of the key ingredients to, to actually achieving that. It can also be used preemptively to buff big chain heals or downpours in anticipation of big damage windows. Um, beside this, we move on to Cloudburst Totem versus Living Stream. Uh, so Living Stream buffs Healing Stream Totem by 10%, and Cloudburst is Cloudburst. Uh, Cloudburst, hands down, will always be the better choice in terms of what it can do for you and the level of control it adds for higher tyrannical keys, where Cloudburst can be effectively used as semi-big cooldowns for like high damage windows. That being said, the buffs to Healing Stream Totem, as well as the cooldown reductions from other talents who will already be specced into, um, means that you can have insane uptime on, on Healing Stream Totem throughout the dungeon, and its healing is uh, definitely nothing to scoff at. Uh, I would say this is a similar situation to Ancestral Reach versus Flow of the Tides that I was just discussing, uh, in the sense that Cloudburst is an active cooldown that you have to think about and manage to use effectively, while Healing Stream Totem is like more of a passive ability that provides decent background healing while you focus on other things. Um, so, you know, sure, you can ultimately pull higher numbers with Cloudburst, but once again, I think unless you are pushing extremely high-end content, this will really boil down to your playstyle. Um, I encourage you to play with both and then make your decision based on what feels best for you. 
Okay, onto the next row, we have Undulation versus Unleash Life. The amount of healing surges and healing waves that you cast in Mythic Plus Dungeons means that you will pretty much always get more benefit from using Undulation over Unleash Life. It is another situation too where you have a passive background ability versus an active cooldown that you need to think about. Um, however, in this case, the passive one is the one that will do more healing. That being said, if you enjoy the way that Unleashed Life works, you can try it out and see how it fits into your kit. Personally, I feel it adds little value to Mythic Plus environments and is more of a raid talent. Um, and also, my tiny brain is already trying to manage so many procs and buttons, and Unleashed Life is just like one too many for my playstyle. Okay, uh, right beside this, they have added a choice talent buff to Healing Tide Totem, which is brand new and it's a pretty cool idea. So current control is a flat 30 second reduction to the cooldown on Healing Tide Totem, effectively bringing its cooldown to two, uh, sorry, cooldown to two minutes and 30 seconds, which becomes even lower when considering the Water Totem Mastery talent that you should already be talented into. Uh, the second choice, Tide Turner, makes it so the lowest health target when you drop Healing Tide is healed for 30% more from Healing Tide and receives 15% uh, increased healing from all of your abilities for 4 seconds. Although interesting, these talents seem more suited for Raid as Healing Tide is not one of the most integral abilities to a Mythic Plus kit. Um, healing Tide acts as more of like a drop and forget healing buffer or cushion while you do either more active healing or more DPS. Um, there are more valuable talents in the tree in my opinion to put these points into for Mythic Plus. Which brings me to another really cool new ability that has been added to the tree with this patch, which is Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem. Um, think of this as adding a medium sized cooldown to your kit on a 3 minute timer. This talent reduces the cast time and mana cost of Chain Heal and Healing Wave by 50% for 10 seconds after you drop Mana Tide. Uh, when synergized with Tidebringer, High Tide, and either Ancestral Reach or Flow of the Tides, you are essentially getting two Omega buffed Chain Heals that take only one second each to cast. Um, and then a bunch of like semi-fast Chain Heals and Healing Waves for the duration of the buff. Um, although this is really fun to use, um, I've been practicing like using it and it's, it's, it's actually like a lot of fun. Um, and it's incredible in theory. It is a really niche ability as unfortunately it does not reduce the global cooldown, meaning that you are kind of stuck for a second after you're casting your Tidebringer Chain Heals, um, where you just, you know, you can't really cast anything out else. Um, that being said, this to me is a niche cooldown that is like perfect for those high burst damage windows on higher tyrannical keys where our kit was severely lacking over the, the last patch. Specifically, the best example that comes to mind are the phase 2 flame spits from Kairaka, the last boss of ruby life pools, um, that do like massive amounts of damage on higher tyrannical keys in a very short period of time. So when used correctly, this talent adds another tool in our kit to really effectively handle those types of damage windows. Okay, and before going on to the next row, I would just like to mention Earth Living Weapon, um, just like I did in my last video. So although a nice ability, in my experience, it is better to use this talent point elsewhere, as you can buy weapon runes from the auction house for very cheap, and they effectively do the same thing. Uh, so Chirping Rune is near equivalent to Earth Living Weapon, so if you want that you know, passive dot, or sorry, hot on people, uh, go with the Chirping Rune. And then Buzzing Rune increases your critical strike, so it's it's good for both healing and DPS. So you can choose one of those and then just, just go with them. But honestly, don't put the talent in an Earth Living Weapon, it's better spent elsewhere. Okay, finally moving on to the final row, I will start with Primordial Wave. Oh, no, actually, sorry, this isn't the final row, second last row. Um, yeah, I'll start with Primordial Wave. Primordial Wave is an awesome ability um, that has been, you know, a staple of our kit for a couple of years now that basically acts as a strong, long-range AoE heal depending on how many Riptides you have out in the group. Um, there are two sides to the synergy coin, if you will, as to how this works with Flow of the Tides talent. Um, on one side, using Flow of the Tides means you will likely have less Riptides out on the group in general, which may gimp the healing that Primordial Wave would be doing if you were not like gobbling up those Riptides. On the other hand, Primordial Wave provides an extra Riptide on a 45 second cooldown that can be used as ammunition for those beefy 30% buffed chain heals. So whether or not you take this ability will largely depend on your preference and playstyle, as talenting into this or not talenting, in talenting into this um, are now both very viable ways of playing. Which is really cool. Like I like what I said, like I love the flexibility we have now. Like you can play with this and be great, and you can also not play with this and be great. Like it's it's uh, it's it's fantastic to have the choice. Um, 
Okay, moving on. Uh, next to this, we have a new talent, and this one is the one that has all the rest of shamans buzzing about. Uh, and let me tell you, after some practice, this is like a beast of an ability that completely and utterly amplifies the effectiveness of Chain Heal. Tidebringer will give you a charge every 8 seconds to a maximum of 2 charges after 16 seconds. That reduces the cast time of Chain Heal by 50%, um, as well as increasing the range by... 100%, which is from 30 yards to 60 yards. Um, this is this is huge. No longer are we like the class that needs everybody to be grouped up in order to maximize the, maximize the effectiveness of our healing. Um, you should absolutely, absolutely be talented into this if you are pushing higher keys, and you should practice and learn how and when you should be using these charges uh, to be really effective with it. Note that just because it's, um, or sorry, note that because it's a charge and not a stack, having two charges does not mean you will have an instant chain heal with a 90 yard range. Like the the uh, buffs don't stack per charge. It just means that you get two uses of the 50% cast time and 60 yard range. Yard range. Um, also note that these charges do not have a timer, meaning that they will stay on you until you use them. Um, you can hold on to these charges for hours. You may notice on this video that my Tidebringer buff on the top right has been there the entire time. Um, next on this row, we have Downpour. Downpour is not um, as must-have, in my opinion, now that we have Tidebringer, but it is something that I personally will likely continue to spec into for the majority of my builds. Um, the reason for this is that Downpour is, as it always has been, an extremely efficient heal in terms of mana, cast time, the amount of heals, and the fact that the cooldown is based on how many people you hit with it. Meaning that if you are only able to hit two people with it, uh, it will cool down faster than if you hit five people with it. So although lacking the range that Tidebreaker gives to Chain Heal, there are several situations throughout all dungeons where the group will be stacked up enough for this heal to still be effective. Finally, the last row. Um, so using my playstyle and my Chain Heal focus builds, the two talents that I will always take here are High Tide, as it synergizes amazingly with both Tidebringer and Flow of the Tides or Ancestral Reach, as well as Ascendance. Um, so for High Tide, if you're targeted into Flow of the Tides, using a High Tide charged Chain Heal on a target with Riptide while you have uh, a Tidebringer charge essentially equals a super fast heal that will hit all players, even if they're spread out, and will most likely top all of them up to full health. And since High Tide has two charges, and you will likely have two charges of Tidebringer as well, and more than one ally with Riptide on them, you will get not one, but two of these insane group heals. So if you use them while Cloudburst is down as well, you now also have a supercharged Cloudburst. I cannot convey how insane this healing is like absolutely nuts it almost trivializes certain boss and trash mechanics that would require a lot of planning and frankly sweating to deal with prior to this patch um honestly it's possible they may nerf this the way that all of this works and and stuff in the future um because of how effective it is so i encourage you to go and try this out now and have a ton of fun while you can. Um, there's always the hope that they will leave it as it is though um, and it's my belief that these new um, chain heal abilities will sort of like launch us into one of the top healing spots for mythic plus in general especially when coupled with the amount of damage that we can do as well. Um, and finally uh, I, once again, Ascendance. I always choose Ascendance in this final row as well, since it is a fantastic three minute cooldown for Mythic Plus that has been and always will have um, a use for the majority of boss fights in the current and next season of dungeons. Um, and then really quickly, just because I uh, skipped over it, um, but this is such a, a a huge buff as well is they did change the way that earthen harmony works um so now earthen harmony makes it so um earth shield uh, provides a six percent damage reduction on the target so um and when you couple this with uh elemental orbit it means that you have a six percent damage reduction on yourself for an entire dungeon and then you have a second one that you can use on any other player at any time with just the cost of a, glo of a global cooldown which is like it's crazy like i know six percent doesn't sound like a lot but when you're pushing high tyrannical keys um there are so many boss abilities that can one shot people and it's usually by like the littlest amount so this six percent um is is massive for helping us be able to push higher keys uh and and it's nothing to scoff at for the tank as well like to to if have a six percent dr on the tank for pretty much an entire dungeon especially on fortified weeks um is pretty huge 
So this ability is a lot of fun, I find, um, with the testing that I've been doing. And one of the, and I'll, I'll play a clip, but one of the, uh, one of the best things that I had fun doing it with was uh, on the Herja fight. So when she puts out the expel light debuffs on people, and then sometimes that kind of combos with an arcing bolt and can kill people immediately. So as she was doing the expel lights, I was like cycling the earth shield onto people who were getting the debuff. And it was just a really fun thing to do, like to just have that 6% DR and being like the freedom that you were able to do it with is great. Um, there was also, I think I'll play the clip as well. I think it was a, uh, um, oh, I forget. I will. I will play the clip so you'll see it. But I think it may have been like a Gale Arrows and Noku Defensive or something like that, where um, somebody was targeted with with an ability, and uh, I put Earth Shield on them, and I also put um, a Riptide on them to increase their health with Ancestral Vigor, and they barely survived the ability. So it, like like seeing that and knowing that I was the reason that they survived that was was such an awesome feeling. So you will absolutely be taking both points into here. Um, just note that the way Earth and Harmony used to work was that uh, basically if you cast healing, I believe it was healing wave or healing surge on the target who had the earth shield, it would like increase the amount of uh, amount of stacks of earth shield they had on them, uh, basically culminating into you like not really having to cast earth shield on them. And this ability was pretty much for the tank. So if you put earth shield on the tank and you were casting healing, wave, healing waves and healing surges on them, you would like really not have to refresh it. So they actually took that away, um, which is fine. I mean, the, the damage reduction is, is so much better, but it does mean that you will be casting this more frequently. Um, additionally, because now you can, you know, put it on people just for random abilities, um, that that's great too, because you can, uh, you can just, it just means you're going to be casting it more, but it's it, like, in my opinion, this is more freedom. It gives us more utility. It's a external DR that we've been lacking for this entire expansion. So this huge, huge ability here. All right. And now going into the, uh, different builds that I think I would use. So, um, I've only had a few days to experiment with this, but I'm pretty sure I have a, a decent grasp on what I would use. So this first build that you see here, and I will, I'll put an import string in the details for this video for this one. Um, this is so far what my go-to for this, this week is, and I would say for most fortified weeks, it's going to look something very much like this. Um, this has been very successful for me so far. Um, it has, it's basically a chain heal focused build on the right side with high tide, uh, tide bringer, as well as flow of the tides. Um, however, I feel like you could also do ancestral reach if you wanted to, it's, it's really up to you and your playstyle. Um, but this also incorporates um, mana tide totem so that you can get spirit walkers title totem, which is basically an extra, it's an extra cooldown for you to use in like oh crap situations. Um, and it has actually been useful. Like I said earlier, it's a little bit awkward to use because you're kind of stuck there because the cast is so fast that like it's way faster than the global cooldown but it's it's great for you like like saving people when they're when you like don't have any time to do anything else um, and it allows you to sort of move in between casts as well which is pretty great so i also have um, master of the elements talented in for big dps i don't have lava surge which may be a little bit questionable um just because that makes master of the elements uh like it, it makes master of the elements easier to use however i feel like lava surge is a bit of a trap uh unless you're doing like it's it's good for single target because a, a single target uh, lava burst is a little bit more important but for when you're fighting anything that is two targets or more um casting chain lightning like spamming chain lightning is always going to net you more dps than trying to weave in flame shocks and lava surge and i feel like the proc from lava surge and the way it appears on your screen kind of like i don't know psychologically it makes you want to press lava burst even though it may not be the best ability for you to press and chain lightning is normally better um really the only reason you would be casting lava burst um in and a situation with two or more targets is to buff your acid rain with master of the elements but otherwise you would leave it alone that being said it is nice for single target so on a tyrannical week i would probably go into this um okay i also so i did mention that i like downpour i like the way it works and i, I think it's just another important tool that we have in our kit but if you wanted to have lava surge for this build you could get rid of downpour and put it in there and that would be totally fine as well it would just net you a bit more dps for single target um however once again i am stressing that that this is really not needed for any multi-target pulls which is the majority of your fortified weeks um 
Okay, so moving on to the left trees, some variety here. Actually, here, let me put that back first. Okay, moving on to the left trees. So, um, like I said, the talents that I would take away from first in order to get purge and fortified if needed um, would probably be, I would say, Mana Spring, Surging Shields, or um, Graceful Spirit talent. The reason I have Mana Spring right now, and um, I should have actually mentioned this when I was talking about the Tidebringer talent earlier, but um, you will learn as you are like doing these first couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks with this new build with Tidebringer, uh, which you know essentially just means faster chain heals, um, you are going to be using more mana than you used to. Um, I feel like it's just going to take a little bit of practice to get efficient again and you know get used to get used to like what to cast and when and how to use your charges and become a little bit more of an expert with this playstyle. but currently i was finding that i was uh i was having a little bit more trouble with mana than i normally do um that is also compounded by the fact that this week is a grievous week meaning that there's just more healing to do in general uh part of the reason that grievous is an annoying affix for healers is not necessarily because it makes it easier for people to die but because you're just spending more and more mana and in addition to that it's also a spiteful week meaning that you don't really have time to drink in between pulls because you know the shades come out and then you're still in combat so um so this week i would probably not consider getting man rid of mana spring i would go and get rid of a graceful spirit or uh, points and surging shields um or even honestly i'm gonna say swirling currents uh it's not really needed uh, it's more like this is great for a raid environment because you're healing so many people with cloud burst but in a in a dungeon environment with five people if you're good at souping up your cloud burst and you're you know synergizing it with your other regular abilities um swirling currents is not going to like make or break you it's really once again just one of those nice to have talents so um so once again if i wanted to go into purge i would either get rid of mana spring um i could get rid of graceful spirit I could get rid of a point in Surging Shields, um, or if I wanted to, I could get rid of a point in uh, s uh, Swirling Currents as well. Um, and that goes the same for uh, Improved Purify Spirit, which is the Curse Dispel as well. Okay, um, otherwise, if you really wanted to go into Gust of Wind, because um, I know some people like to do that, that's unfortunately not for me even though the, the ability is so much fun i think there's higher value in other talents um you could get rid of the same points you could get rid of uh, mana spring maybe graceful spirit um oh actually sorry no i guess you can't do that because then you uh, lose nature's fitness so you have to have one of these uh between the two like it's going to depend on whether you need the mana or not um so here let's get rid of that so we get rid of one um you might want to get rid of both points in surging shields however because it's uh, earth shield is healing so much at the moment that may not be the play um so i personally think because earth shield is doing so much more healing um that you may want to get rid of uh swirling uh, currents instead also, what you could get rid of, um, once again, depending on your playstyle, um, is you could get rid of Thundershock and Thunderstorm. Personally, I wouldn't because I really like the control that these abilities give for you know crowd controlling, especially on Fortified Weeks. Um, but if you are running with a group that you have good synergy with and you know that they're going to be able to get all the stops without your help, you could absolutely get rid of these talents. And then you really just have to take one point from either Swirling Currents, Surging Shields, or I mean, technically you could, uh, sorry, or from uh, Mana Spring or Graceful Spirit. I also wanted to say you could technically go without Nature's Guardian as well. Um, however, Nature's Guardian is going to be one of those things where um, it saves you, right? Like, th think of it this way. Nobody plans to die, which I, I know that's kind of a funny thing to say. But, like, when you get hit by an ability that you're not expecting or maybe you stand in something you're not supposed to or whatever, this is kind of like, this is going to save you, right? So I wouldn't necessarily get rid of this ability unless you, you really have to, or you just maybe don't agree with it. Or, you know, if you're an amazing player who never gets hit by anything, um, then maybe you don't need this either. But I would say keep this and maybe get rid of some one of the other ones that we've been talking about. Um, but once again, this is my current build for this week. So I will put the import string uh, in, the, in the details. Okay, uh, so just quickly moving over to a, uh, actually, sorry, I was going to move over to a tyrannical, but first, um, I just want to say if you want to play the Riptide, or sorry, not Riptide, if you want to play Primordial Wave as, instead, um, what I would either do is get rid of Downpour and go that way, or if you want uh, both Downpour and Primordial Wave, you could get rid of Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem. Um, and even though it's really cool and it, and it provides, you know, a really, really nice um, extra cooldown for us, like I said, it's very niche. So you could you know, depending on the dungeon that you want to be in, 
sorry depending on the dungeon that you're running and you know what bosses you're about to be facing and all that stuff you could plan to use a uh, spirit walker's title totem um you know for certain certain fights or abilities but i guarantee it's not something that you you need especially on a fortified week um so yeah you could do this or, or something like this or um you know something like this if you didn't want to use downpour there's there's so much that you can there's so many little things that you can do here if you want to incorporate downpour or primordial wave into your playstyle. um okay so i'm gonna actually just put everything back okay now real quick if if i was going into a tyrannical week uh there are a few changes i would make um, first, you definitely want the extra point into Ancestral Vigor if you're pushing higher Tyrannical Keys because uh, that extra 5% health increase is huge for some of those really hard one-shot abilities. That being said, I also would probably want to keep Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem depending on the dungeon. So for instance, if it's Kairaka, or maybe you're doing Herja or Fenrir, um, like there, there are a lot of dungeons where this having this cooldown in your back pocket could be very useful um so i, nece I wouldn't necessarily want to get rid of this um so i would maybe get rid of downpour and put that in there um, and then my thing would look like this um, if it's a week where you are not concerned about mana you could get rid of resurgence instead um, and do this and it would look like that um, and if you still don't want downpour, then you can put that into Lava Surge as well and have DPS. So once again, there's a few things that you can play around with. Um, I think my final, like if I had to uh, uh, pick a Tyrannical build right now, it would probably... Um, yeah, I honestly, it would probably look like this. So I'd probably get rid of Resurgence, have Mana Spring just in case, and then uh, have all of the cooldowns that I need. And then really the only contentious point here is between Lava Surge and Downpour. So because I find more value in Downpour than Lava Surge, I'm going to put this as an import string for the uh, Tyrannical build, and you guys can, you know, play around with it as you will. Um, like I said, it's very viable to go uh, Primordial Wave instead of Downpour. And if you're new to this, to this, uh, to like healing as a shaman or you're trying it out this patch because you've heard that we've been buffed and it's a lot of fun um you can always get rid of of uh, master of the elements um until like you're you're pushing higher keys and you need that extra dps because really it's not it's it's not that huge unless you're pushing higher keys where like really every single uh, piece of damage you can do counts towards timing but if you're pushing you know 20s or lower i would say there's no no problem with getting rid of master of the elements um, and putting that into like resurgence or um or maybe primordial wave if you want more healing or whatever you need that's one that you could get rid of if you're if you're not pushing super high keys um you could also get rid of stormkeeper although i don't advise that because it works so well with um with ancestral guidance and also it does do a lot of dps and uh, in my opinion, it's like so much fun to use. So, um, but once again, if you're pushing lower keys and you're not that concerned about DPS, this is uh, this is another one that you could get rid of. Um, also, sorry, on that note, if you are pushing lower keys, you probably don't need ancestral vigor. Um, you could actually get rid of both points and then. Um, you know, put them put them wherever you want, and then you could run a build like this. Um, and then once you start getting higher, you can you can you know sacrifice what you find you're not using. So you know if you play with this build and find that you're not really casting downpour or you're not really casting primordial wave, you can take points away and put them back into ancestral vigor. Um, okay, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so once again, this is the uh, build that I'm that I'm going to. Uh, oh, sorry, getting rid of that. Okay, this is the build that I am going to uh, be importing for uh, Tyrannical, and then you know the other build that I was showing before. This is the one that I will import for uh, uh, for Fortified. So, anyways, play around with it. Like I said, this is not set in stone. There's a lot of freedom now. So take take the the builds that I've shown you, the the two builds that I'm going to put import strings in for, and uh, curate them to your own playstyle, to what you enjoy doing, and you know just go out there and have fun. This is a really really awesome time to be a resto shaman with these with these new buffs, and uh, hopefully you've been like as you've been watching this video, I've I've put in a lot of clips in the background. Um, I actually haven't as of yet while I'm talking, but I will I will uh, when I start putting this video together. So um, so you'll see. I've been obviously having a lot of fun just w watching the chain heal, like like literally snake around everything and hit people 60 yards away or like hit people who are completely um out of line of sight or you know whatever it's just it's really cool to watch and it's really cool to play and uh it makes us so effective so it, this is a great time to push if you're looking to push higher io um you know get title get 3k whatever your goals are um this is a great a 
uh, absolutely fantastic time to be a resto shaman. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to end this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the comments. You can come to the resto shaman discord as it's uh, very busy at the moment just uh, because of this new patch. Um, so you, your questions are always welcome there and there's always someone who will be willing to help you out or answer. So um, with that, hope you enjoyed this guide. Hope it helped you out. And um, oh, I just want to say also as well that I am redoing the cooldown video that I did a while ago. Um, so that video, it got a lot of positive feedback. However, the main criticism from everybody was that the audio was not that great, um, which I understand. So I'm trying to make it with better audio, and I'm also going to incorporate some of these new cooldowns as well that we've that we've received this patch. Um, so that will be launching probably uh, within the next week or so. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, but until then, uh, happy healing. I hope you guys really have a uh, have a really good time with this new build.